In the modern world, tales of the supernatural serve nothing more than amusement. But deep inside a mystic cave lies a glowing egg said to rob a person's time. Surin, a young girl, recounts her story while a doctor records her. Since her mother died, she's been living with her stepfather, Dogyun. Thanks to a construction contract, they move to a remote island, but Surin feels excluded in her new school. Even her stepfather's been getting more distant, choosing to work long shifts than being with her. Their estranged relationship has reached a point when Surin would rather use her original surname than Dogyun's. Dogyun's construction company detonates a tunnel. To soothe herself, Surin plays her music box. Because of her circumstances, she dreams of escaping to different worlds, even searching for out-of-body experiences on a school computer. However, she forgets to close her browser, and she finds her classmates flying walking over her computer and teasing her. Walking home alone, Surin stares at her shadow when she meets Sungmin, an orphan boy who goes to her school. After their meeting, she catches him glancing at her. Surin later overhears him saying he had an out-of-body experience after reading her blog but she claims she made everything up. Sung Min follows her later, and she finally listens to his out-of-body experience at the beach. He proposes inviting a ghost with her. Surin considers and hands him a notepad full of symbols to memorize. When he does, Sung Min sends her a coded message in school. Later that day, they perform a ritual to invite the ghost, but despite their efforts, no ghost answers Surin's question about her mother. Sung Min, however, had ridiculous wishes, making her laugh. Over time, they grow closer and share coded messages. Sung Min leads her to an abandoned house near the sea Wall, and Surin says it feels like it has a door to another dimension. Thanks to the dragon wax carvings, Sung Min carved Surin's image too. Surin confesses she too is an orphan, letting Sung Min divulge getting abandoned by his father. Sung Min finishes etching Surin. Then, the wind blows, and Sung Min spooks Surin, leading to a chase down the stairs. However, Surin trips and the wax figure slips through a hole. Sung Min attempts to retrieve it, but cuts himself in the process. Instead, he promises to make another carving for Surin. When Sung Min gives his slippers to Surin, and wears an old pair of shoes, Surin asks if he likes her. Surin also wants to know if Sung Min will like her forever and then kisses his lips, stunning him. Inspired by his presence, Surin later writes a coded poem about not being afraid anymore thanks to Sung Min. While walking to school, Surin is accidentally hit with a toy gun pellet by Che Wook, Sung Min's friend. Sung Min apologizes, and unintentionally mentions his plan to watch the tunnel explosion later with his friends. Annoyed that he told Surin, Tae Sheik and Che Wook refuse to let her come, but eventually, Sung Min convinces them. Later, they sneak in through the safety fence, but only four of them proceed as Sang Chul bails. Surin takes a photo of the boys while walking to a suitable place for the explosion. In the area, Surin spots a deep hole under a tree, and their curious Curiosity pushes them to explore it. Che Wook is forced to lead the way. They see a dim light at the other end of the tunnel, which leads to a pool of water lit by a glowing egg. Sung Min dives to dislodge the egg and brings it back to the surface. However, the light dies, spooking Che Wook, who rushes outside. When they re-emerge from the hole, Tae Sheik suggests it could be a goblin's egg that steals people's time. He recounts a legend told by his grandfather about a mysterious cave that appears during a full moon, like the one they just entered. Suddenly, Surin panics, realizing she lost her mother's hair pin inside the cave. Sung Min attempts to follow her back inside, but thanks to the two boys teasing about them dating, he backs away. Back inside, Surin finds her hairpin in the dim cavern, but as she's about to return, an explosion rocks the mountain, and the pool begins glowing again. Crawling out, she survives, but finds the boys gone and the egg shattered. She searches the forest frantically until nightfall, and her phone eventually dies. At the tunnel site, parents are begging to stop the construction. Dogyun arrives and pacifies their fears about their kids being nearby. However, one of the parents receives a call and and informs Dogyun that Surin was with their kids. News spreads about the disappearance, prompting a search. Police bring Dogyun in for questioning, but he confesses he's not close with Surin since her mom died. Detective Becky considers if Surin ran away. Outside, commotion erupts when a kid is found. Everyone panics, but to their dismay, Dogyun confirms it's Surin. At the hospital, Surin recounts her experience to the police, but her account sounds ridiculous. She leads them back to the mountain, but frustrates everyone when she can't locate the cave. The parents lash out at her for her unreliability and reputation in school. Tensions arise when Dogyun defends her. Then, Becky's partner receives a call about finding a body, shocking everyone. At the playground by the beach, Che Wook's body is found. While watching the news, Dogyun hears rumors from his colleague about their company abducting the kids to cover up an accident caused by construction, all while Surin eavesdrops. When Surin returns to school, everyone looks at her warily. Che Wook's funeral visits the class, and Surin reminisces that memory later while in the tub. She thinks of Sung Min and admits her relief that he wasn't the one who died. 
but she feels guilty for Chae Wook. The events take an odd turn when Chae Wook and Tae Sheik's clothes are found at their houses, which the police confirm using Soo Rin's photo. While alone back home, noise jolts Soo Rin. She checks outside and finds the bricks out of place, something Sung Min used to do. Movement catches her attention, and she follows it into the forest until she wounds her foot. A hooded man then calls her name. Soo Rin backs into a tree while he draws closer. Unveiling his face, he confesses he's Sung Min, but this scares Soo Rin. He holds her, but her screams hurt his ears. Soo Rin bites Sung Min's hand and breaks free while the guy's taking out a red book, screaming downhill until she sees Do Gyun's car. The police arrive and search the area. While Becky shows Soo Rin photos of offenders, she reveals that the man calls himself Sung Min, surprising the detective and Do Gyun. Outside, the police find a red book. Shocked to see familiar symbols, Soo Rin takes the book to a room. Flipping through the pages, she finds Sung Min's entry on the day of the incident. Apparently, Tae Sheik discovered the egg moving on its own. Sung Min suggested breaking the egg, which, upon impact, released a force. Seeing it was empty, Sung Min crawled back to Soo Rin and found everything frozen in time, including her. Horrified, he rushed outside and found the two boys looking up at frozen birds. They walked down the mountain until they found Chae Wook's father frozen on a motorbike with an unknown woman. At first, it was just fun, and they did whatever they wanted. However, they eventually realized there were some things they couldn't do, and they began losing track of time. By the shore, Tae Sheik suggested leaving the island as time might pass elsewhere. Before leaving, they visited their houses to get what they needed, and Sung Min visited Soo Rin to tie her shoelaces. But when they tried leaving by boat, they found it wouldn't start or row. When Soo Rin reads up to this point, she hears the police find adult male footprints in the woods. Alarmed, she rushes outside, claiming she lied. When Becky asks why, Soo Rin just apologizes. At the police station, Becky reads Soo Rin's blog about out of body experiences. That night, Soo Rin continues reading Sung Min's entries. Because the boys couldn't leave the island, they just continued wandering, setting up camp inside a mall. Tae Sheik wondered why Sung Min bothered with marking the dates, but it helped restrain his frustration. They heard Chae Wook coughing and wheezing as he suffered from asthma. Tae Sheik and Sung Min spent their day reading comics, but Chae Wook's condition worsened. When they returned, they saw Chae Wook frozen in time too. Chae Wook's death made Tae Sheik cry. Sung Min carried Chae Wook to the playground and buried him in the sand. All while Tae Sheik mourned. To honor him, Tae Sheik suggested keeping his clothes and bringing them back to his parents. Eventually, they grew older in the time bubble, using it to study and steal cash from people. While strolling, Sung Min saw someone resembling Soo Rin, but Tae Sheik confessed he'd forgotten her face. By then, they'd spent over 2,000 days and were reaching their 20s, meaning the spell could finally be broken. They bought fancy clothing and continued strolling. When they passed by Chae Wook's father and his other woman, Tae Sheik wondered if he looked like his childhood self. Sung Min confessed that when he thought about who might recognize him, only Soo Rin came to mind. He decided to visit Soo Rin again, but he couldn't get inside the cave, thanks to his adult build. Instead, he retrieved the lost wax carving he once made for her and placed it inside her music box, which Soo Rin finds in the present. Sung Min wondered when they'd grow up, for no matter how long they waited, time wouldn't flow. Tae Sheik began losing grip, but Sung Min clutched to the hope of returning. To entertain himself, he carved wax portraits, and even gave one to Tae Sheik. Sung Min encouraged him to do something to feel time pass until they return, but Tae Sheik helplessly asked when they'd be considered adults, blaming him for breaking the egg. He lamented they'd die there like Tae Wook. Scared of the thought, Sung Min left and obsessed over the hope of returning, carving more wax portraits in the process. Once, Tae Sheik spotted him screaming into the void, and he realized Sung Min too was losing hope. Later, when he woke up, Sung Min stared at the sky and realized the moon had changed. He excitedly looked for Tae Sheik, but found him nowhere. He scoured the island daily, wondering if Tae Sheik had seen the moon, until he found his clothes near a rocky outcrop by the sea. Tae Sheik had taken his life in the sea, and Sung Min felt a strange sense of relief. He blamed himself and also plunged into the water, thinking it was all over. He found Tae Sheik's body frozen in time and began letting go. But just then, time moved. Tae Sheik sank deeper while Sung Min awakened along the shore later. After years of silence, the noise overwhelmed and scared him. Su Rin keeps reading when she hears a thunderstorm, and she rushes to the abandoned house. There, she finds everything Sung Min has maintained through the years. She walks slowly and finds him huddled against the wall. Her presence relieves Sung Min, and as she hands him back the red book, she cries and calls his name while apologizing. Knowing she recognizes him, Sung Min cries too. Afterward, Su Rin marvels at her wax portrait. Talking on the balcony, Sung Min wonders if anyone will believe him, but Su Rin reassures him. Meanwhile, the police find leads using dashcam footage. It's Sung Min who left the clothes. 
First, Su Rin leads Sung Min to a public shower. Then, she gives him a haircut reminiscent of his younger self. Because he's still not used to the noise, Su Rin takes his hand while walking. Using Sung Min's wads of cash, Su Rin buys better clothes for him, and she coaches him with his story. Told to make it sound convincing, Sung Min recounts a time when he and Sang Chul destroyed Che Wook's Nintendo. But when Su Rin relays this to Sang Chul, he rebuffs her in disbelief. Pissed at her insistence, Sang Chul throws the red book into the sea. Around town, Sung Min's wanted posters are put up. In the abandoned house, a butterfly flutters into Sung Min's hands, and he recalls his time with Che Wook and Tae Sheik. Peering into the slide, he finds water welling inside it. He dives and finds himself in the ocean, until someone pulls him deeper. That night, Su Rin awakens and finds Sung Min sitting in her room, not wanting to be alone because of a dream he had. He blames himself for everything, and wonders if it's right that he's alive. Su Rin reassures and comforts him, letting him sleep under the bed while they hold hands. The next morning, Su Rin panics as Do Gyun tries opening the door, but thankfully, he's only informing her that he'll keep working. When he arrives at the site, the boy's parents confront him about the strange story Su Rin relayed to Sang Chul. Do Gyun defends her, but a mother confronts him about the cover-up rumors. He flips out, telling her not to believe in whatever she wants to believe, but this agitates the parents. While walking through a forest trail, Su Rin concludes that Sung Min isn't 30 years old yet. They then visit the orphanage, and Su Rin asks the caretaker if she'd recognize a grown Sung Min. Hearing a favorable answer, Su Rin beckons for Sung Min to come, but Do Gyun arrives and drags her away. Sung Min tries following them, but Su Rin tells him to talk to the caretaker. Arriving home, Su Rin storms off, but Do Gyun flips out at her because the story she's telling put him in difficult positions. He brings up her mother, but Su Rin blames him for her death. Do Gyun almost hits her in response, and in his anger, he drags Su Rin to a room and nails the door and windows to lock her inside. Su Rin begs to be let out, but Do Gyun admits he doesn't know what to do anymore. At the orphanage, Sung Min finds the caretaker. He recounts something that happened to Sung Min, confusing her. Shocked at who he is, she tells him to tell her more outside. But when Sung Min recognizes a fellow orphan and tries approaching the kid, the caretaker freaks out, and he realizes she doesn't believe him at all. While checking Su Rin's phone, Do Gyun sees a photo of Su Rin and a grown Sung Min. Horrified, he drives home. Sung Min arrives at Su Rin's house and forces the door open. Relieved, she hugs him and cries, saying no one believes her. They then ride a bus somewhere. Upon getting home, Do Gyun finds Su Rin gone, but after alerting the police and saying he'll call again, he checks the photos once more and heads somewhere else. By the sea, Su Rin realizes a goblin's egg also existed during Taishik's grandfather's time. Thinking she saw another egg in the cave when she went there alone, she asks Sung Min to lead her back to freeze time. Su Rin adds she'll be fine as long as they're together, but Sung Min vehemently opposes the idea. Instead, he suggests leaving the island and going to a place where nobody recognizes them. As long as Su Rin knows him, he'll be fine, and the girl agrees. Dog Yoon drives to the abandoned house and enters it armed with a long piece of wood. While snooping around, he hears Su Rin and Sung Min coming inside. They prepare their things, but when they're about to leave, Dog Yoon whacks Sung Min in the head. He tries dragging Su Rin out, but she crouches next to Sung Min, who sprawled on the floor. Sung Min clutches Dog Yoon's leg as he attempts to leave with Su Rin, but Dog Yoon kicks him and breaks free. Sung Min slams Dog Yoon against the wooden pillar and almost hits him with a chair, but Su Rin stops him. Although shocked at what almost happened, Su Rin treats Sung Min's wounds. The police arrive and search the abandoned house. Seeing the wax portrait, the police deduce Sung Min's a predator. Baeki confirms to Do Gyun later that Sung Min's footprints match those found in his house. And in response, Do Gyun shows him Su Rin's photos of Sung Min. At the ticket counter at the dock, Su Rin tries buying boat tickets for herself and Sung Min, but fails because she can't show Sung Min's ID. Sung Min watches the news, horrified as experts discuss the psychological aspects of the case, and if Su Rin is partly responsible for her friend's disappearance. When their photos are displayed, they run outside. However, police are everywhere, forcing them into a taxi. Seeing a checkpoint, they hurriedly alight, and the driver alerts the police about them. They run to hide in a drainage tunnel, with the police in pursuit. With them closing in, Su Rin and Sung Min are forced to hide deeper inside. They run until they reach a tall drop. Sung Min jumps and convinces Su Rin to follow suit, but she instead tells him to not get caught. She also says they should meet at the cave later. She runs back, and the police find her. Inside the interrogation room, Baeki creates a plausible story where Sung Min is a predator who deceived Su Rin. More believable than the truth, he tries convincing Su Rin to lead them to Sung Min as it might lead them to her friends. While Baeki's partner gets coffee, Su Rin escapes through a window. The police scramble to find her, but Su Rin gets to the mountain first and notices the full moon. She finds the path they once took, and it leads her straight to the cave. Inside, she finds a glowing egg in the pool while police search the mountain. Su Rin dives and successfully retrieves the egg. She crawls out and places the egg on the ground, and it rolls to Sung Min's feet. Although she's defiant about going through the experience alone, Sung Min refuses to give the egg back. Instead, he'd rather play along to the story where he killed her friends. Then everything will be over. While they debate, an explosion rocks the mountain. The goblin tree topples over. But
but Sung Min saves Su Rin. When she awakens, she sees Sung Min running away with the egg. Sung Min sees the police, and they spot him too, leading to a chase that ends at a cliff overlooking the sea. Su Rin catches up to him, and Sung Min wonders what would have happened if the egg didn't break and they lived normal lives. Although he can't live that life anymore, Sung Min doesn't want Su Rin to suffer the same fate. The police catch up to them, and an agent waits to ambush Sung Min. With her arms, Su Rin tries to protect him while Baeki asks Sung Min to send Su Rin over. Baeki aims, but Su Rin stubbornly shields him, yelling that the cave and egg are real. She begs Baeki to believe Sung Min for once. The agent lunges and seizes Sung Min, and in the struggle, Su Rin is accidentally pushed over the edge. Baeki gets her in time, but he too falls, narrowly clutching the rocks. Sung Min breaks free and nearly tumbles over. Seeing Su Rin in danger, he perilously scales the narrow cliff to save her. The egg still in hand. Unfortunately, Su Rin's just too far out of reach. Then, Baeki's grip slips, and they fall. As Su Rin falls, she resigns to her fate. However, time freezes. Su Rin awakens to the sight of beach waves frozen in time. Sung Min takes her hand as they watch the stillness, but all this is just a dream, and she wakes up instead to the sound of waves, with Becky also sprawled on the shore. Su Rin realizes what Sung Min did. He broke the egg to save her. Returning to the session, the doctor wonders why Sung Min left Su Rin on the shore. Su Rin thinks it's because he wanted her to live normally. Growing tired of not being believed for the truth, she resorted to lying to the police during an interview that Sung Min threatened her. The media crowd her as she leaves the station for home. Although their house is vandalized and shards of glass are everywhere, she thanks Dog Yoon over dinner, catching him off guard. Becky comes that night and admits he doesn't know how they survived, but even if he believes Su Rin's story, nothing will change. He instead coaches her on what to say to make a plausible story. Finally, the session concludes. The doctor asks if Su Rin's okay with writing the story in a book. Su Rin wants to stop telling lies, but she hands the doctor a coded message she wants to be included in the book. Sometime later, the doctor holds a copy of Vanishing Time and gives it to Su Rin, who now goes to an all-girls school. Dog Yoon calls her, and before she leaves, the doctor compliments her appearance. On their way home, Su Rin recognizes Sung Min's back. She jumps out of the car but finds him nowhere. Dog Yoon follows and asks if she saw someone, and while returning to the car, she turns around once more. Aboard a ship, Su Rin reads the coded message in the book, the poem she once wrote for Sung Min. While walking, she spots him and hurriedly follows him. Finally, after decades in between, she finds him again above deck. Su Rin approaches him and smiles through tears. Sung Min, now much older, turns and subtly smiles at her. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.